Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the ZT0801 tie. Um, pretty sweet knife. It's one that's uh, kind of been around for a while, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more of that as we get into it. But uh, for now, let's go ahead and get into the technical specs that I care about. All right, guys, so taking a quick look at the technical specs that I care about, you're looking at a blade length of three and a half inches. It's a CPM S35VN, uh, just a drop point flat ground blade. Uh, titanium handles, both on the show side and the lock side, with a hardened steel insert. Uh, deep carry pocket clip is tip up only, left or right hand, though. You get a little lanyard hole there uh, see-through construction or a flow through construction rather with the the standoffs here and uh, weight on this guy is uh, 5.60 ounces so pretty hefty uh, blade thickness is 0.16 inches so uh, manual flipper of course on kvt bearings um, pretty standard stuff there uh, knife was designed by Todd Rexford for those of you wondering so collaboration with Todd, Todd Rexford and uh, Yeah, there we go with the uh, technical specs out of the way. Let's go and talk about the blade All right guys, so getting into the blade here um, I really like the the look and the design of this blade uh, just super attractive uh, very simple styling, but um, just the lines of everything uh, kind of going through the rest of the knife starting with the blade uh, it really looks pretty great um, you've got a, a pretty wide sweeping plunge here it's a flat round blade uh, you get the swedge here up at the top and it's all in this nice stone wash finish um, it's a I wouldn't say it's a super aggressive stone wash finish but it's definitely something that catches your eye in a good way um the the knife is a little bit on the thicker side but it's okay the the knife is still ground well so you still get something that's um maybe a, a little bit better than average as far as the thinness at the edge um one thing that uh i'm kind of okay with in in this instance um the absence of a sharpening choil especially with a sweeping plunge like that um I feel like in this case, it would mess with the, the aesthetic of the blade. Um, I mean, just having it, you know, start off with the, these lines here uh, looks way better than if there was just some, you know, kind of obstruction there that kind of threw everything off. Um, you'll just have to deal with, you know, sharpening it as far into the plunge as you as you want there. Just try to make it even. Um, on a knife that's kind of this expensive anyways, um, you're probably going to want to take your time and at least have practiced before sharpening anyways, so um, not a deal breaker there. Um, you get uh, a little bit of jimping here on the flipper tab. Um, it's not much. It does give you a little bit of traction. But uh, yeah, the flipper tab is positioned in a, in a good spot. And it's rounded enough to where it doesn't dig into your finger at all or make it uncomfortable. Uh, so I do appreciate that. Um, no, no forward choil or anything. I guess if you really wanted to, you can, um, you know, experiment with getting your, your finger up here since you have some portion of unsharpened blade. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, though. Um, there's just not a lot of space there. Um, but yeah, that, there it is. Um, you get a, a pretty decent uh, point here on the blade. Um, it's not ground in a manner that would be, an, you know, an exceptionally pointy tip, but uh, it still gets the job done. So uh, S35VN is always a, a great choice too. Uh, ZT does a good job with their steel, so no concerns there. Um, you know, taking a, getting the blade out of the way here, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the handles. So I've got a couple things to talk about there. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at the handle here. Uh, got a few different things to cover. 
Uh, this version of the 801 is kind of an updated or a refreshed model of the original. Um, I'll see if I can throw a picture up here of what the 801 originally looked like when it was first released. Um, looked a little bit different. Uh, admittedly, you know, the newer updated design is uh, quite a bit better in my opinion. Um, but, you know, I, I owned one of the old models, um, you know, the first models when it originally came out. And, uh, still a great, great knife, still a great design, but I like the more streamlined look of the updated handle scales versus the old. So like what's going on there. Um, regarding the, you know, these new style of handles, um, they feel good in the hand. You get a little bit more contouring than you did with the, the first version there. So uh, in the hand, it, it feels a little bit better than the original. Not that it was uh, bad, but... Um, feels good in hand. Um, you get a really good full grip on the knife. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's not super thin, but it's not super thick. It fills your hand well. So if, you know, you're getting into extended use there, I don't think it'll be too uncomfortable. Uh, as far as pocket clip goes, it's uh, kind of your typical loop over deep carry pocket clip from ZT Kershaw. Um, reversible tip up um, left or right hand carry. So it uh, sits pretty deep in the pocket too. So pretty much the only thing exposes that lanyard hole. So if you do put lanyards on your knife, it'll just, just be the right amount. Um, other things here, uh, worth mentioning at least, uh, you got the hexagon side here and then your normal pivot hardware on the show side. Uh, it's kind of nice. I don't really like having to mess with, you know, either side while taking it apart or adjusting it. So, um, while it may not look symmetrical, I, I do like that um, whenever they can throw it on there. Um, stainless steel uh, lock bar insert, always a good thing, just increases longevity of the knife. Um, I guess speaking on the lanyard hole, it's kind of got a weird uh, like stepped design going on there. Would have been nice if it was just a, you know, just a clean hole all the way through. I don't, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Um, weight on, uh, just the knife in general, um, you know, having these, you know, thicker titanium handle scales, uh, add to that weight. So, uh, 5.6 ounces is not light by any means, uh, probably well, definitely on the heavier side of what most people would feel comfortable with carrying as an EDC, you know, depending on the clothing that you're wearing. So, uh, that would be one major thing to keep in mind, you know, even at the blade size, um, you know, kind of jumping a little bit ahead here, but all things considered the whole package, 5.6 ounces is, uh, it's getting a little up there. So, um, you know, they tried to skeletonize here, uh, through the handles, you know, probably mainly for, for looks, but I'm sure they were also keeping that in mind of trying to drop some of the weight. So at least they tried to do something. I'm not saying it's uncarryable, but, um, you know, still, like I said, worth mentioning. Um, just a uh, bead blasted titanium. So uh, not a whole lot of color on the knife other than the black accents with the hardware. But, uh, you know, honestly, doesn't bother me too much. It's nice when they do have a little bit of flair, like they often do with the standoffs or whatever, but not a huge deal to me personally. So, um, all right, well, handles out of the way. Let's uh, talk about action and fit and finish. All right, guys, uh, let's go ahead and get into the action and fit and finish of this knife. Uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this simply because there's only, you know, so many ways that I can explain this. Um, simply, it's uh, it's really great. So um, just the overall fit and finish of this knife is fantastic. Um, knife is perfectly centered. I mean, just dead centered. Uh, very clear to see. Um there's no play in the blade in any direction. So no side to side, no up and down. And it's still not super free fall shut, but still smooth as all hell. So, um, you know, <laughs> just the action and fit and finish of this knife is fantastic. Um, detent is dialed right in. Um, it's, uh, I would say, almost on the light side of medium, 
but it more than gives you enough to just very comfortably flip the knife out. Um, if you're flipping this knife, uh, you don't have to think about it. You just, you know, hit the flipper tab and the knife deploys. Simple as that. It's a very smooth, uh, probably not the fastest deployment, but uh, very smooth nonetheless. So I, I really like and enjoy flipping this knife just over and over again. Um, it's it's super great. Um, so yeah, there's there's not a whole lot to say other than that. Um, the knife is just manufactured and put together very well. So uh, yeah, that's that's really great. And uh, like I said, that's really about all I can say. Um, you know, in that department, this knife is kind of a home run. So. Uh, with that, we'll go over um, miscellaneous comments, my overall thoughts, and then we'll shut it down. All right, guys, uh, here are my overall thoughts on the knife. Any uh, miscellaneous comments that maybe I haven't brought up yet. Um, before looking at this knife in its, uh, in its base or original model, I probably would have made some comments on the handle scales, how they were, the way they looked. Um, and you know, honestly, that may be part of the reason why I had let it go after a little bit of time, um, cause I no longer own that, that knife, but, um, though I'm really glad to see the changes they made in the new, these new 801s moving forward. And, uh, I'm really glad to see that these are, you know, still available. Um, uh, you could still pick these up on, on retailers. I want to say, uh, price on these guys is hanging around the 240 mark uh it's it's a good pickup for 240 i will say that that is a price range with a lot of really stiff competition so um you know one thing that jumps to my mind immediately is 562 cf um arguably a better blade steel uh still a really great uh action and fit and finish for that matter and uh, a killer design as well um so uh you know ultimately you know it'll boil down to personal preferences but i still think for uh for that price 240 for this knife is a good deal um even more so with the updated updated handle scales and all that so um yeah i'm glad they made the changes they made um it's really welcome i i like everything about it uh, I would say really the only drawbacks you're going to see with this knife is the weight. Um, and really offhand, that's honestly the uh, the only thing that I can really think of. At least when I carry the knife, that's the only thing that I noticed that I wish was a little bit different. Um, and like I said, there's not a whole lot you can do just because of the thickness of the titanium, the overall size of the knife. But uh, whatever. It's a great knife. Uh, everything else makes up for it and then some. So... Uh, if this has been a knife that's been on your radar for a while and you have that 240 to just drop on it, or if you could find it cheaper, you know, on the secondary market, you know, through the forums or through Instagram, um, I would say go for it. If it's a design that you like, uh, go ahead and get in on it. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you sticking around here. Uh, please subscribe if you're new or if you're returning and haven't quite made your mind up, uh, go ahead and just hit that subscribe button. Um, also link to my Instagram is down in the description box as well. Uh, you can go ahead and hit me up there and interact with me directly. Get some cool, uh, behind the scenes shots and just cool everyday pics of knives. Um, and with that, well, we'll go ahead and catch you guys on the next one. Thank you.